This is, this is another testimony of if God is for you, who can be against you? Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. It is good to be back. It is really good to be back. Uh, we're going to get into the Inouye versus Fulton fight, which is official for May 7th. I'm going to give you my prediction. I'm going to tell you why. But before we do, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog. Uh, quick hits come at you every day, 8 to 10 minutes a day, to keep you up to date on the latest, greatest boxing news and rumors. Um, also... Uh, please subscribe to the other channel, Texas Boxing Scene. That's Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. That's uh, dedicated to all things Texas boxing. All proceeds from that channel go to Autism Research and Recovery, which is near and dear to our heart. All right, let's get into today's show. Um, so it's official. They had a press conference May 7th. Uh, now, in a way, three division world champ uh, is moving up to Super Bantamweight 122 to fight for Fulton's WBO and WBC titles. Uh, this is a great fight. This is a home run. Um, you know, and I'm going to get into the prediction. Um, obviously, in a way, is a top 10 pound for pound guy on everyone's list, top three on you know, nearly all lists. People, some people have those one. Fulton is probably just outside your top 10. Like if you had other receiving votes or, you know, next three, four, five guys on the list, Stephen Fulton um, would be one of those guys, right? 12, 13, 14 on pound for pound list, but he's, you know, he, he's on the bubble. Um, Stephen Fulton has had a meteoric rise. Um, it, it, it wasn't long ago uh, where, where Fulton was impressive on non-televised fights. Um, he fought, on the Jarrett Her J Rock card um, and, and won an IBO belt in a really impressive fashion um, on an untelevised fight. That was in 2019. Um, he, he's gone on since then. He beat Isaac Avalar. Um, that was on the undercard of Brandon Figueroa and Javier Chacon. That was in, in the Rio Grande Valley. Then he went on to beat Arnold K Guy. Uh, which was an impressive win, and then he destroyed Anzo Leo, and then he got the controversial win in a really good fight with Brandon Figueroa, which we can get into why he didn't deserve that decision, why Figueroa did beat him. Uh, you know, Figueroa had already announced that this was his final fight at 122, uh, and he was going to 126, win, lose, or draw, that he could no longer make the weight. PBC had a stable of guys at 122, just a ton of talent at 122, um, they wanted to keep the belt on the PBC side, and this is just my kind of take on it. And had Figueroa won the two belts, he would have vacated them, um, meaning that they would, PBC potentially would no longer have control. And guys like Reese Lean um, and, and Fulton wouldn't have wouldn't have a claim on those belts. Um, so the the very competitive fight, fight of the year type fight that I, I thought pretty clearly uh, the heartbreaker won. Went to Fulton uh, via majority decision. It, it's one of those things. It's like everyone who watched the fight scored it for Figueroa. Everyone. Close, but they all scored it for Figueroa. Everyone watched it. Everyone scored it for Figueroa except for all well, the judges. None of them scored the fight for Figueroa. And that really makes you scratch your head. You had Tim Cheatham, Dave Moretti, and uh, Dave Sutherland scored it even. Um, Sutherland's the only one there with a reasonable scorecard, eight to four for uh Fulton. Really, is not a reasonable scorecard. You, you can't tell me he won eight rounds in that fight because that means Brandon only won four when he won seven, right? So, I mean, again, it's a great fight, but the, the, the decision kind of clouds um, how good Brandon fought. Um, I, I thought the best performance of Brandon's career, which is a very good career so far, uh, for the 26 year old. Um, so that and then um, Fulton destroyed Danny Roman, uh, beat him wide, uh, 120 108 on two of the three scorecards, and 119 109 on the third. Um, so, so that's Fulton's story. He, he he came up quick, he's 28 now, he's he's in his physical prime. Uh, he, he 
multi-dimensional body. He, he, you know, he, he, you think of him as a mover who likes to jab and circle and keep moving. But I mean, we saw in the Figueroa fight, we saw in the Roman fight, and uh, we we saw in the Isaac Avila fight. Um, he can crack on the inside. You know, he he can do that. Um. Now, for in a way, you know, in a way needs no introduction. You know, in a way is already a Hall of Famer, um, three division world champ. He's still just 29 years old, um, which is getting up there for a guy. He he comes all the way up from uh, 108. He won his first world title, skip 112, won belts at 115, 118, 122, and he just beat Paul Butler, who was a joke of a fighter. And but he's got two wins over Denaire, um Jason Maloney, Emmanuel Rodriguez. Juan Carlos Payano, Jamie McDonald, Antonio Nieves, uh, Kohei Kono, David Kimona, Om- Omar Navarez. It really, I mean, he, the, 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 the resume is, is stacked. It's a pound for pound Hall of Fame resume. Here's my issue, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm taking Fulton. I, I think Fulton's much bigger naturally. If Jordan Fulton was a guy that was rumored to go be going up to 26 before he took this fight. In a way, the guy who starts at 108. So I just think Fulton is bigger, naturally stronger, and, and can push in a way around. And he may be able to stand up a little bit better uh, to in a way's power. Um, I think Fulton's a better inside fighter. I think he's a better outside fighter. Um, I think he can throw more punches. I think there's more ways he can win round. And I think that he can hurt a smaller in a way. What in a way has is just he's more explosive. That's it. That's the only advantage he has is he's more explosive than Fulton. Right, he his fight ends in one punch knockout. That's more likely uh, in a way. Um, but Fulton can hit to the body. He's got body shot knockouts, knockdowns. Like Fulton can fight. Fulton is a more multifaceted fighter. He can win the fights in more ways than in a way can. Um, so when push comes to shove, I, I, I just I think this is a great fight. Um, I, I think in a way could knock him out. Right. I think you know that that's always a possibility. But if I had to bet. I, I think Fulton's, Fulton's skills, his speed, and, and his multi-dimensions seizes the day for him. Um, I, I think that, you know, that there are moments when, in a way, it might get him in trouble, um, and then Fulton kind of has to hold on and survive, but he can do that. And then I, I think Fulton beats him up on the outside, pushes him around, bullies him on the inside, and, and outworks him on the inside. Um, you know, in a way, he's not a high, or super high punch output type of guy. Um. So, you know, Fulton is just a hard guy to win rounds against. Like, you got to be a guy like Figueroa, and even the judges didn't score those rounds from him, and we can get into why. But, you know, Fulton is, is an underrated guy. He's good defensively. He can make you miss, right? He can outwork you. He can outhustle you. He can outjab you, and then he can he can outwork you on the inside, right? He's just a hard, hard guy to win rounds against. He's a hard guy to beat. So I'm going to go – I know a lot of people are going to take it away, but I, I'm, I'm taking Fulton in this fight. I'm taking Fulton uh, on decision. My, my only kind of drawback is the fight's in Japan, and, and we just saw what happened to Josh Franco with Ioka. You know, it, 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 this could be, in a way, by injustice, right? In a way, could get a, a robbery decision. That could happen, Right. But I, I'm not going to predict that. I, I'm going to say Fulton gets the decision that he deserves. Um, and, and, again, I know they get paid a little bit more to go fight in Japan. Maybe it's a lot more. I haven't seen the purses. I, I, I just don't think that this is a great idea for Fulton to go there. I think Fulton can beat him. But why? I'm the champion. I'm the unified champ at 122. He's coming up to fight me. Why am I going over there? He can fight me in Philly. He can fight me in Vegas. He can fight me in New York. We can do this anywhere, but I'm not going over there to get robbed. But it's my belt. Um, you know, Josh Franco, they were both champions. You know, there are other times you're going to fight for his belt. Okay, if you're going to go fight for his belt, you got to go fight in his backyard. But why is he fighting for your belt in his backyard? Right? Like, if I'm in a way, why do I get to fight for your belt in my backyard? Shouldn't that be in your backyard or, or, or at least a neutral site? Let me know what you guys think. Um, I guess I, I, I'm in, in a fight I really, really like. I think this is a good competitive fight. It's a great fight for boxing. I just think uh, in a way, and now, you know, he, 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 count, he skipped 112, but 118, you know, 108, 112, 115, 118. His fifth weight class, it's just too much right now. Uh, so, you know, that's why I'm taking Fulton. 
Um, let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Also, leave your predictions. Let me know what you guys think of uh, my take. Uh, it is, it's already March 7th, uh, 2023. So, this fight's just two months away. Um, March 7th, 2023, from Texas to the world. Thank you, and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.